started. Okay. Um, so let's uh, let's pray and ask God specifically that uh, you know that God will use us uh, probably uh, over this weekend, the next few days to um, to communicate the gospel, like to share the gospel. Um, I know in today's day and time, we're not we may not be meeting people in person, um, but whether it's a text, whether it's an email, whether it's over Zoom, um, let's pray. Let's ask God to, you know, for divine connections, divine opportunities, and let's believe that God will, uh, you know, lead us to that person who needs to hear uh, hear the gospel. Now, it could be um, it could be the full gospel. Like, you know, you have an opportunity, the person has the time and you are able to share. Um, or maybe it is just to nudge, nudge them towards that, you know, towards it's uh, it's not the goal, but it's uh, you, you've, you know, you've passed um, and it's a good pass and you're going closer to the goal. So it's something about the truth. Maybe they are curious and, you know, let's just believe God, right? Let's pray and let's believe God, um, that God will do that uh, in our lives. Father, we... We, we just thank you, Lord. We thank you that, um, God, that uh, that in your wisdom, Lord, that you appoint, uh, you give and grant divine appointments, Father God. Um, and we ask this morning that you would do so in our lives, Lord, that you'll take us to people, lead us to people, Lord, who need, who need to hear the truth, um, who need to hear maybe words of encouragement from the word um, which opens their hearts to the gospel and i pray that each one of us god uh, here in this class each one of us lord that um, even as we pray this we pray with ex uh, pray expectantly father god that um, you will use us to share the gospel that you will use us to communicate the truth oh god in um, uh, in ways that only you know is possible, God. And I just pray that we'll be open, we'll be expectant, we'll be sensitive, um, even as you lead us in those ways. So we thank you, God. We thank you, Lord. We commit this time into your mighty hands. We pray that you will lead us, that you will speak to us, that you will quicken something, stir up things in us, Father God. Stir up a passion, Lord, for your name. Stir up a passion for the, uh, for the mission God, uh, uh, for your mission, for your work, stir up a passion within us, Lord. We thank you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Okay, so we believe, believe that, right? So we'll, we'll be expectant towards that. We'll, let's, let's pray uh, and let's believe expectantly that God will, um, you know, show us, lead us, and, uh, and that we'll be able to share the gospel. Uh, maybe it's a neighbor, maybe it's uh, someone on the street, uh, whoever, right? Okay, and uh, we'll come back with some stories, right? Probably when we meet, uh, when we meet on Wednesday, I guess, for the same class. So uh, we'll let's let's believe God uh, that we will have some stories to share, right? Okay, okay. So today um, we said we will uh, hear. We, uh, last class we looked at um, uh, the relevance of uh, preaching, the relevance of homiletics, and before that we looked at uh, you know um, the whole. Uh, uh, the whole uh, function of preaching in the Bible, right? Preparation, arranging, and, and and preaching in the Bible, and we looked at some sermons as well. We looked at uh, you know uh, how the Old Testament prophets, how they would speak, and how um, uh, how they used language and uh, and the figures of speech in language, and we we see some of that in uh, you know coming through uh, in in Psalms, in Proverbs, and uh, and. And in the prophetic books as well, uh, and we looked at three sermons. We looked at uh, the sermon uh, that Paul, uh, Peter preached. We looked at the sermon that uh, Stephen preached, and we looked at the sermon that Paul preached in Athens, and and uh, you know the the way in which they preached, and uh, and it's amazing. Some of them, uh, like uh, I think all of them, did not have any you know uh, notes, but they were prepared. Like they were prepared uh, by the Holy Spirit through what they've heard through the through the experiences and uh, through their time with um, uh, you know with, with with the lord right so we looked at that and also um okay so we said that you know how did the gospel come to us right how was it preached you know um so uh, 
okay someone else also feels okay uh, oops okay let me let me just try uh, reinserting it this one second please is it better sam is it okay does it still have yeah okay. yes 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 okay, i won't touch it's gone it. the scratch is gone <laughs> okay okay so we said you know let's see let's hear some stories you know from uh, how did the gospel come to us okay uh, was it through some song that we heard was it preached to us uh, in what relevant way uh, you know in what way was it communicated that it that it kind of made sense or it, it set us on a journey to you know to seek the truth right so we said you know we'll just take some time to uh, to listen to that so it's now yeah 11 8 okay we have some time so um, you can just go ahead unmute and uh, just take a minute you know very concisely just take a minute to to share you know how was it preached how was it communicated that uh, the first time you said yes to jesus okay. uh, so yeah so who'd like to go first and uh, can so, i go first yeah sure charles yeah just take a minute okay very briefly okay please go ahead yes uh me the preaching uh, took place uh, when i was in prison in 2007 i was in a government prison i had been taken there for making counterfeit money and the god took to me in the middle of the night asked me what would you do if i get you out of here i said if you are a human being i will work in your company and if you are good i will speak your name in the morning um he talked to me again i had finished breakfast and seated alone the same voice talk, talked even at lunch the same voice talked on the the evening at around the a pastor came the one those people who preach in prisons and delivered the sermon and did an invitation and they stood up for the lord and that's how it was preached i was in prison and that's when i had that's when i said yes Thank wow you. praise god awesome thank you so much charles wonderful to hear that and also um you said god spoke to you and asked you like uh, you know if i get you out right so how did um how did he speak you know how did you sense that that god was speaking how did you know that god was speaking i was i, I it was in the night and the, the voice was talking clearly and we were in the cell lying on the on, on the on the cement and i woke up and the voice had gone but when i was seated uh, under a roof in the morning after breakfast i was looking down and the voice again talked mm. uh, i could i move i moved my face to see who is talking but nobody was around but i was hearing the voice right and even that the, the third time was done at lunch mm. yeah okay and uh, just so, one question and yeah. because i yeah. was not seeing the person i knew it was god mm. okay so when um, so uh, when you heard the message the 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 in the prison preaching and the person who had come to minister so anything in the message that was preached did it did it draw you uh, you know to respond that way or was it just the call you know if anybody wants to towards the end um, no the the thing that pulled me was like uh you have to accept christ otherwise regardless of your knowledge you will go to hell and i was okay. a vibrant teacher for physics and mathematics and mm-hmm. i was destined for hell i had no time for the bible all those questions were coming in me i had performed very well in the country in 1994 and i had been given a gift of the bible and i did not know where that bible was so a lot of questions were coming in my mind and all those questions so the answer was surrender wow praise god awesome thank you so yeah anyone else would like to go next um 
Okay, I'll share very quickly. Uh, for me, um, you know, I was in a youth camp and uh, uh, I had actually reached a place in life where I thought that, uh, you know, religion was an emotional crutch and, um, and I didn't want anything to do with uh, religion. Uh, but somehow I was in this Christian youth camp because my friends invited me and I was there and and I was also feeling very empty on the inside and uh, but this was my you know this was my perspective of Christians that Christians were emotionally you know uh, crippled people and also religion itself was an emo- was a was a crutch so I didn't want uh, a crutch to go through life so um, so I was sitting there and listening and um, and a lot of things were being shared nothing made sense. Right, uh, nothing made sense at all. I was I was feeling very bored. I was sleepy, and uh, and then there was one statement which this person made, which really um, so I I just call it a one liner message. You know, one statement that this person made, which made sense. He said, "You need guts to be a Christian." Okay, um, so so that was very different from what I had thought about Christianity, about Christ, about, uh, you know, Christ followers. So, um, it made, it got me thinking, right. So it kind of shook me like, okay, different values going, going against the flow, going against it. Uh, so that made me think, right. And, uh, and, and after the camp was over, we were just going back and I was in a bus standing, for about almost an hour in the journey back. And I I was talking for the first time to the Lord, you know, in, in sincere, uh, in my heart, I said, Lord, um, all these people seem to think that you're, you know, you're real. And if you are, you show me and, uh, you know, I, I'd like to make some changes in my life, right? And, uh, and then sure enough, I went back and uh, I, I realized that I had actually, you know, in stages, I was giving my heart to the Lord and uh, went back and uh, the, the Bible made a lot of sense. I started reading, I started praying. And so I really don't know when I actually came to the Lord, when I made my decision to the Lord, uh, date, time, I don't know. But I know that something started at that camp when that person said, um, you know, you need guts to be a Christian. And he was a very successful, you know, he was professional. He, he was working for a company called HCL Computers and um, and he was, uh, he was a regional manager. So when he said, you need guts to be a Christian, you know, it kind of changed my perspective about Christ and started the journey there. Okay, so that's, that was how it came. <clears throat> so it was a one-liner message, right? Okay. Anyone else? Let's see a monkey, sir. Um, sorry, Hope, uh, you said something? Yes, I say let's give Brother Mangi to give us uh, his testimony. Yeah, anyone, anyone, yeah. Um. <laughs> yes. Thank you, Brother Hope. It's good to, to have you online. It's good to see you. Uh, okay, thank you, sir. Uh, mine is different. Mine, uh, I... I don't know when when I gave my, my heart to Christ, but it all started when I was when I was a kid when I was young. Uh, we used to live in a in a in a military b- barrack, and there was like two blocks out two houses down the down the road. The, the the men met every morning to pray. Like five o'clock, they will they will ring a bell, and then they start singing hymns and praying. I think those hymns were my uh, what's it's what preached to me because wow. since I was five, growing up, I, I grew I grew up in the morning because they were singing loud. I couldn't sleep, so I started singing them. And then on Sunday, I'll go and I'll go stand by by the window, listen to what they're preaching and 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 praying. So yeah, I don't know when when when. What 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 happened to me? But I, I believe that that was the foundation of my uh, my my believing. Oh wow! Thank, Thank you. you, Thank you, Maggie. So, uh, do you remember any hymn that actually particular hymn that drew you um, from the hymns that you were singing? Any particular? Um... Yes, sir. There is there is one I still remember. It's uh, it says, "The grace of Golgotha." Mm-hmm. I don't know how it's goes in English, but. Let's say it's like it's like a great sea. Mm. 
Okay. Yeah. Okay. I was about to ask, can you sing it for us? But uh... <laughs> I'm not a good singer. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So, in what language is it? Is it Swahili or is it? Uh... Uh, yeah, it is it was in Swahili. Swahili. Wow. Wonderful. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Mangi. Okay, next. Who else? Um probably we'll ask Hope. You know, you suggested Mangi. Okay, so maybe we can do this, okay? So Hope you can share Wait. and then you decide who should share next. Okay. You can call out the name. Wow. Um, and then they will do it. Okay, so go ahead, Hope. Thank you, Pastor. Uh let me, me, I just maybe to sing a song that Brother Mangi was not a, a good singer in singing that song in Swahili. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's the song is like this is Usifi we msalaba, Lisifi we kaburi, Lina no zidiote. As if he were more cozy, and meaning that uh, praise be the cross, praise be the Son of God, is all about uh, uh, Golgotha. So, is is this hymn is testifying about what Christ did at the cross in redeeming us and us uh, making us to know Him? Yeah. Wow! Wow! Praise God! Awesome! Yeah. So, yeah. Go ahead and share hope about your life. Okay, for, uh, I I came to know God uh, when I was uh, from from two from two, I was just going to tuition and uh, I found out that I was studying very hard, but I was I was failing at class. But one day I go in a certain church, which was a Pentecostal church. I don't know how I changed. I was very rude boy. I was I was very gang boy, but. I don't remember. God transformed me from that day, and uh, is when I start my journey to know God. It was about 2013 till today. That is how I was being saved. Yeah. Okay. So you were going to church, you were listening, uh, but you're not sure how, when it happened. Uh, but any particular time, any message that made sense? Um, was it? It was 2014. Okay. 2014, I, I I came to realize that what I was being taught there at church was correct. And uh, 2015, I I accepted to being baptized, and uh, it's when I was being filled with the Holy Spirit. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Right. Thank you. Yeah. Who do you who do you like to share next? Whose name would you want to call on next? You can just suggest. Okay, can Kennedy, share? go ahead. Yeah, go ahead, Kennedy. <laughs> I think mine is, uh, it's, I think it's the old song. <laughs> because me, after from college, I graduated. I got a job with uh, an Indian pharmaceutical company. Here, I was being well paid. And uh, I entered into a bad lifestyle. I used to drink, I used to be a organizer. Then, after some time, I got promoted. I got more money, then I started having misfortunes. But I've had about four different bad automobile accidents. Mm. I almost lost my hand. My hand was actually my hand was supposed to be amputated. But uh, one day my daughter just came and told me, "God loves you," mm. and it really touched me. She actually wrote me a letter, told me, "God loves you, Dad." Just surrender your life to God and see a difference. Mm. So from there, I sat down. I, I meditated over that statement for quite a while. Okay. Then in the process, then in the process, I didn't go to church. Mm. She went to church, prayed for me. Then they made a home visit. So this is your. Um, so who wrote to you? This is your daughter. You said. My daughter. Mm. Daughter. I thought she was mm. in great. Yeah, mm. Mm. I, still, I still keep the letter till today. Mm. Yeah, so, mm. so she came and told me that God loves you. Just pray. Mm. Everything will be okay. She came, they prayed for me that she gets in our place. Then that day I had, I didn't sleep. I was very restless. Mm. But after the prayers, after I felt a big difference. Then uh, I went by, I went to church. Then I committed my life to Christ. Then I became poor. After I lost all my money. 
know, everything just crumbled mm-hmm. into the sky again. And I can, of course, I lost my job. I was sad because of carelessness. I was drunk and I was not keeping my record straight. Mm-hmm. Then I can have to start life on a different, uh, fresh. But honestly speaking, I've seen a very big change in my life. God has really given me the direction. I've recovered what I lost. And I'm happy. I'm happy. I'm happy. Wow. See, and even to my fellow colleagues, they ask me, what happened? What did you do? But I tell them it's by the grace. It's not by my own effort. Yeah. And Praise even God. my daughter, even my daughter, I can be praying together with my daughter day. Mm. Yeah. The university, but he's, he's been one of my strongest pillars in my Christian life. Wow, it's really moving, very touching to hear that. Yeah, wow, yeah. praise God. Thank you, thank, thank you, Kennedy. You. Yeah, so who would you like to share next, Kennedy? Who would you choose? Oh. Yeah, just oh, call out any brother. name on the... sorry, my dear brother Samuel. Samuel, Sam... oh, okay, Sam, Sam, Kaiba. Sam, you go next. <laughs> Thank you, um, thank you. Um, so uh, for me, uh, um, I think my mother has been uh, my biggest influence in uh, bringing me close to God. So um, I have. Uh, so it's her life. Uh, so not any particular uh, preaching, but uh, her life and and everyday family devotion. I think. From uh, from a very early age, she would just uh, keep us together. So I have two younger sisters, so uh, she, we would make sure that there are at least two fellowships that happen at home, like family prayer, one in the morning and one in the evening. Uh, so uh, I was in grade uh, four. I was in class four. I don't know. I don't remember the age, but probably 10, 11 years old. Uh, that's when... Um, uh, just, uh, I think the family was um, going through a hard time. Um, my mom and dad had a lot of differences, uh, uh, but basically we were with mom. So my um, mom would raise. I think my mom and dad were not reconciled in a very good way. So I would just uh, I'd see my mom struggle a lot and uh, just watching her uh, talk to God as if God's her like the closest friend, you know, and, mm. and she pray. So. Watching her life, watching her personal relationship with God is uh, what brought me to Christ. And, uh, and uh, the way uh, my mother would, con- would conduct uh, the family pl- pl- class, play. like uh, even now, even to this day, uh, when we get in the class and if mom has to speak, her message is pretty much the same. You know, she is like, you need to. Like, she, it, it, Almost feels like uh, an altar call. Every message that she gives feels like an altar call. She's like, you, you need to give your life to Jesus. You need to come, like, no matter who's sitting. Uh, so she'll just share something, but she'll conclude that. Um, she'll conclude with, uh, she's old school, so she'll conclude with, have you, uh, you know, given your life to Jesus? So it's, oh, yeah, yeah, okay. So it, mm-hmm. That's what brought me um, close to God and has helped me uh, in my journey with Christ. Wow. Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. So the life actually preaches louder than uh, many, many sermons. Yeah. And that preached to you. Okay. Thank you so much, Sam. Yeah, Sam. So, Sam, who's next? Um, I will go next. Okay. The next. <laughs> Thank you. Okay. Thank right. you, Sam. Yeah. Um, uh, my family uh, actually uh, uh, I'm, uh, come from uh, Hindu background. Uh, before uh, accepting Christ, uh, my family uh, was uh, affected uh, under uh, which craft uh, okay, for which... twenty years. See, I always uh, I'm a friendly friendly guy uh, who relates with everyone. That's my nature. Uh, so I didn't believe. Um, uh, the, all this uh, which were after uh, devils. Um, uh, my friend, uh, uh, I while I am studying uh, PUC second, uh, my f- close friend um, uh, took me to the church. Uh, likewise, uh, 
uh, I liked uh, 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 Spaster's sermons. Uh, uh, I was uh, touched uh, by sermons. I, I uh, my friend uh, gifted me uh, Bible. Uh, uh, I uh, never uh, uh, read Bible, but uh, uh, I was worried. Uh, later on, uh, my dad uh, was serious. Uh, later on, uh, my uh, thought, uh, uh, why is all of a sudden uh, uh, there was no peace uh, at home? Uh, always a fight, uh, uh, calling uh, between uh, my mom and uh, father, my um, uh, sister, uh, my myself. Uh, as soon as uh, I came out of my was, uh, I used to enjoy. I used to uh, more uh, more uh, spend time in church. I was pe feeling the same peace. Uh, so uh, uh, my pastor advised me to ask God uh, peace. Pray for your uh, mother and father. I, uh, I, um, since I was um, not milling uh, witchcraft, I did not uh, tell anyone. So, so uh, God, um, uh, I felt uh, in my heart. Uh, the Holy Spirit asked me to open Bible. So I opened the Bible and uh, so, uh, talking to me uh, there is a, a man had a bacillus devil you need to believe um, uh, unfortunately uh, um, um, during that time my dad was possessed um, uh, uh, possessed I did not know what uh, to do uh, mid uh, night. He was um, taking uh, the knife and uh, he was uh, uh, keeping the throat uh, to cut. Uh, mm. That's when I realized uh, da dad uh, was um, possessed. Uh, God gave me grace um, to pray for him. Just uh, prayed. Um, uh, uh, Ratham Jam, Ratham Jam. Also, what else? Uh, other ways, uh, I only uh, uh, no, no, no prayer. Ratham Jam, Ratham Jam. So I could uh, hear another, another voice. No, don't say me. Don't say me, uh, call me. Uh, don't say uh, to my, uh, I want to kill him. Can't you want to kill him? I co continued my prayers. Good Jesus, your uh, save my uh, uh, um, dear dad. Uh, the demons, as soon as uh, uh, I was prayed, uh, uh, I prayed, oh Lord, um, then I could see uh, some black spirit leaving um, my house. Uh, that's when I realized um, uh, um, uh, evil preservation uh, described. I uh, started uh, to pray. But uh, unfortunately, I the devil uh, created me, uh, provided me job, uh, which um, was um, uh, in Nasik. I was uh, traveled to Nasik. Uh, I didn't realize. Uh, while this time, my father passed away. Uh, uh, later. Um, uh, I uh, I decided to uh, uh, catch of the um, uh, de uh, demons uh, which craft 
uh, is the uh, if we accept that uh, Jesus Christ uh, is the only savior. Um, uh, uh, I also told uh, convince my family, uh, mother, sister. Um, she was uh, complete uh, into by ground. Uh, a believer of uh, worship idols. I can which uh, are, uh, she was uh, not willing, uh, devil uh, uh, not willing. Uh, so I prayed, uh, I, I did uh, turn 21 days um, mm. uh, fasting prayer, Daniel's okay. fasting prayer. Uh, I was uh, uh, out. Uh, um, God uh, really brought me, my family out uh, of um, uh, this witchcraft activities. Uh, my God grace, um, uh, I am uh, totally, uh, my family um, totally accepted Jesus Christ in 2015. Number twenty, uh, okay. for the unconditional day that was. Uh, we had um, no relatives, mm. no friends uh, to help. Uh, my friend uh, chose me after uh, uh, um, that. God um, uh, gave me power of um, uh, speaking uh, tongues. And uh, right. Well, uh, right, Dinesh. Thank you. Thank you so much. Yeah. So, um, yeah, it's wonderful to hear. Thank you so much uh, that you were saved and your family was saved and everyone came to the saving knowledge of Christ and through the power. So what Dinesh was saying was that he, when he prayed, he just prayed that, you know, those three words, Eshwin Ratham Jayam, which means victory in the blood of Jesus and, uh, you know, that evil spirit left and so on. Thank you. Thank you for uh, sharing that. Okay. Anyone else? Um, anyone else? Okay, I'm just going to uh, point and close my eyes and, you know, touch one person's name in the screen and hopefully, you know, <laughs> that person will share. Okay, so, okay, that's Rupa. Why don't you share Rupa quickly? Sir, there is nothing dramatic in my... No problem. Yeah, we're just, we're just looking at, uh, you know, how uh, was the gospel preached? We're just trying to find out, you know, uh, how, yeah. how did the gospel come to you? Was, was it communicated to you? And yeah. then you gave your life. So, yeah. so okay. very, very quickly, if, very briefly, if you can share that. Okay, sir, sir. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, before I was born, my mother and father, uh, during my, my mother conceived and she, they started fasting and praying, I believe, because my mother has already lost two, three babies, I don't remember correctly, and they were fasting and praying, and after I was born, the moment I started understanding, I don't remember a time, sir, when I don't know God. I don't know how. Many time people ask, when did you receive Christ? I had a deep hunger and thirst to know more about God, to love God and to please Him. I don't know how. And uh, over the period, uh, He has corrected me. He has brought me into more into His, closer to Him. That's what I can share. Thank you, sir. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Rupa. Uh, anyone else? Uh, may I share, Pastor? Yeah. Go ahead, Subhajit. Thank you. Yeah. So... Uh, 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 in the year 2009, uh, I was 17 years old. Then I had finished my uh, board exam for class 12. And so I was talking with some of our friends in the, in, in the street. So one person came. I knew him. He was a uh, resident of that area. He was having one eye because uh, he was beaten by police due to some criminal offense. So he came uh, suddenly and, and he started preaching the gospel to us. So out of nowhere, I thought, oh, wait, what this man is saying, I've never heard it before. Uh, I've heard about Jesus, uh, he's a Christian God, but I've never heard what he's saying. So, uh, and he invited uh, us to 
to the church was attending so i said okay i'll go to the church so the, the next sunday i went to the church and i was like looking into the people faces they were crying they were raising their hands so i was not getting the message clearly also but that day the pastor gave me a little book a uh, blue new new testament book so i i went home and i always loves to study books actually so so uh, every day i used to reach one page my parents we were strict hindu i was from a strict hindu family so they stare at me they'll say what this boy is doing but uh, so i started going to the church every sunday i was i was i was loving the environment and everything but i was not understanding the entire message but i used to read the book and understand some part of it because that time it used to come in a kjv vers- version so um, yeah so so something happened after 5 months my father had a cerebral attack and he passed away and uh, uh, that time no person from the family came not even that person came and i was broken and my sister and my mother we were four people in a the family they pointed their fingers at me that because i started went, going to the church all these things happened because i uh, yeah so because i was becoming kind of a freak in all these things they they used to call me like that so some uh, they started pointing finger at me out of nowhere when people were crying so much i also wanted to cry i felt a tangible peace over my entire body and i still remember that old red sofa in my in my home i i took two step backward raise my hand put the hand over my heart and say lord jesus from today i leave all those idols i accept you as my lord and savior so that was the day the day my father died the body was laying in my home they were family and everything pointing fingers at me i don't know where i accepted the lord that day and even at the time of cre- cremation also i didn't feel anything I-, i wanted to cry but i couldn't because that peace was so tangible so thick that i could that like it's like a uh, it's like jacket over my body and i could feel it and from that day onwards till today i'm in in the lord and praise be to the lord jesus christ that my entire family has believed the lord is baptized and yeah for 10 years we are a believing family yeah thank you pastor thank you praise god awesome thank you thank you so much okay anyone else yes pastor <coughs> can okay. i show yeah sure yeah <coughs> so i'm trying to uh, make it very 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 short uh, that was my <laughs> struggle mm. So in 2001 uh, from Delhi we came to Bangalore for just 6 months and my husband had changed a job and we landed up uh, worshiping with pastor Ashish in his house church he had just begun in february and march we shifted here and july onwards july i lost my dad so there was a huge vacuum in my heart but pastor that time was preaching us the series called who we are in christ so i i wrote down everything in my diary this is the first time i started noting down the word and within 3 4 months we again went back like 6 months here and we went back and there was a huge vacuum in my heart I, and i started praying lord uh, we need you we need a good church i didn't know what was the prayer but we landed up in uae i was working there as a teacher so um, i remember the first time mm-hmm. we entered the church this song uh, was as the deer panteth for the water so my heart pants for you so this song just touched my heart and uh, every sunday uh, without fail uh, the tears were flowing uh, from our eyes me and my husband and we were so touched by the holy spirit but we didn't know anything about the new birth about the gospel and receiving jesus as your personal savior that was not something we were uh, known to Uh, but uh, as i was working i was in a very very bad circumstance and uh, in, in that place in my school and uh, one fine day in a parent teachers meeting uh, this parent came in who was uh, not very happy with the child's result and he was a christian and he came with all his family three children and he sat behind um, before me i was very burdened with the workload and and the pressures and my quad my supervisor was very upset with me with certain things and i didn't know uh, i was not at fault but there was something that was tormenting me and i was very heavily burdened sitting there waiting for parents to come and he was the first parent who came with his family 
and he sat down and i thought now he is going to grill me because you know he is a fussy parent <laughs> mm. and i am wondering what to say I, i just wished him and he started talking and i i just didn't say anything before that he said can i pray for you so i was wondering okay a parent praying for me uh, i said sure uh, sir you can pray and he started praying and the presence of the holy spirit came in that classroom where he was praying for me very strongly mm. and all the burdens just rolled away and i felt so much peace i was continuously in tears but after the prayer i felt like uh, you know there was immense peace in my heart and my journey with uh, for hunger and thirst for the lord began there everything became so clear to me as to what was happening in the past romans 828 was the verse that god showed me that everything that was happening in your life that circumstances the pressures the you know whatever was coming was uh, for for your good so uh, he just left and uh, it was a supernatural experience and after that continuously like i cannot even count how many supernaturally uh, uh, supernatural experiences god touched me held me saved me and protected me until i realized that uh, it was pastor ashish who had put the seed in my heart of who i am in christ so when i came back from uae i found this diary again and when i opened the diary i realized that everything was written in it and all those words made so much sense to me so i prayed i said lord i want to go back to apc church once again so 10 years later lord brought me to this place where i am you know now learning so much about the lord and that hunger and thirst is being satisfied and in the same church uh, god is teaching me all the truth and uh, you know relationally i am growing in the lord so i give all the glory to god and thank you all the faculty and teachers for this great privilege thank you nice. sir yeah, so good to hear that so awesome praise god so um, so it is a prayer that really you know uh, uh, drew your heart to the lord uh, even though you know all that was there in the environment you know always constantly hearing the word but yeah awesome good to hear that so, so good. okay we 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 still have some more time so we'll pack in as many as possible um so so can i start... share yeah, yeah go ahead uh, bula sure uh my testimony is like when i was in school i don't even remember like maybe i was in the first standard or second standard at that time like uh, i studied in a convent and uh, uh, the gideons people would come and give us this small gideons bible to the children in school and uh, i had also received one and we would have this uh, people come like every year and pass on the small gideon's bible so i would have this uh, small bible in my bag and uh, whenever i felt sad or whenever i felt lonely or whatever um, like difficulty i was going through i would just open up that uh, small gideon bible and i would start reading the scriptures my uh, my most favorite one was uh, psalm 23 and when i was uh, facing any difficulty i would uh, read psalm uh, 62 and i would like actually uh, find a lot of strength and courage and because of that i started to draw very near to god at that age and i would go to the chapel also in the convent and sit there and for during the lunch or everything i would just keep speaking to god and um, i started to just draw close to god just reading those uh, the scriptures in that gideon bible and uh, uh going to the chapel though i came from a csi background from a christian uh, family we never heard the gospel in the church so i never had an idea about the gospel and when i came to college and i was a teenager uh, one day my uncle uh, who's a baptist pastor just came to visit us and then he asked me to come with uh, the the family took me uh, to their house and that sunday like you know um, he was preaching and his preaching was like fire and brimstone from the air, from the starting of the message till the end of the message the whole entire message was for me and he was like literally going out saying like your baptism in the church your confirmation your living as a christian nothing is going to uh, take you to heaven you're not going to have a relationship with god it's a relationship with god that you need you, and uh, and he was asking this question like you know saying uh, do you have an idea like what is going to happen to you if you died right now what is the confidence and it was like really very very uh, I, for me at that point of time i felt very hurt and it was very embarrassing 
and i knew he was telling me in front of the whole church like you know and when i got back home like he was quiet as normal the relationship but then i went back to him the next day which was monday morning on the 27th of may and i told him you said all of these things that i'm going to go to hell and uh, i don't have an eternal life and all of this stuff and i said on what basis are you saying all these things and then he took me to gospel of john and uh, third chapter and he showed me how jesus said even to nicodemus said even though he's a scholar even though he was um, a person who did all of these things that the scriptures required yet jesus told him that you have to be born again and then he shared the gospel through the gospel of john third chapter saying how a person in spite of you being a christian or whatever practice you do yet if you are not born of the spirit if you are not born again you cannot inherit the kingdom of god and that is the point when i said yes i want to inherit the kingdom of god and i want to be born of the spirit and born of god and then i asked him what i should do and he led me in that prayer of receiving the lord jesus christ and from then on my journey started and i brought the gospel home to my own family shared it with my parents my siblings and everybody and they also received the lord wow so praise god yeah, yeah it's wonderful that um, yeah you went back and you asked and uh, you know i had uh, you know sat down and reasoned and he, he had that opportunity to share beautiful praise god thank you okay um who else okay so um so just wanted to share this um you know take this time um to to hear all the stories i'm sure there are many more you know uh i see tarun i'm so sure chris uh, and each one of you prabhakar you know all of you have a rose um, you know felix and all of you have uh, you know different ways uh, or, or different stories and to share about how you came to the lord and it will be interesting you know the circumstances you were in and how the gospel was communicated you know sometimes like from what we hear we see many ways like sovereign encounter like in the case of charles and and um, uh, and a combination of that you know the sovereign encounter uh, with god and god using someone and a song uh, a letter it's it's wonderful right so i just want to inspire us um, you know and motivate us to to do the same to others you know the way the gospel came to you the way god reached out um, you know to you to us you know um, may we surrender ourselves to god that we may reach out to others um, with, the, with the gospel and then let others have the joy of knowing doing the lord let others have the joy of you know having their des- destinies changed and uh, you know their lives being a testimony right so so uh, you know like we prayed this morning this weekend just believe that god will lead god will orchestrate god will divinely appoint bring people to you or maybe you know someone there in your phone list uh, someone there in you know in an email list someone that you will communicate you know it can be a song it can be a letter it can be something but um, let god use you to communicate the gospel because he has called us to this right okay so um so next time we meet yeah can i uh, so, yeah anita it's uh, very yeah. briefly because we're yeah, almost done briefly, yeah yeah, yeah. Pastor. Okay. pastor or uh, like uh, from childhood pastor uh, i was longing for a love and uh, like there would be a time whether it is my mother father or so many people around me i would uh, look for a love but it would happen that uh, over the period of time at least, almost my 20s and all like whom whom so ever i uh, expected that they would love me and there would be a time where they would actually fully like uh, dishonor me or uh, like there would be a time that i would not feel any longing uh, i would feel that where that love gone like how can suddenly it can just go away and how can they just uh, distance me like that and uh, it is to break my heart but and all the i have born as a christian or uh, god we, we you know that we have to pray to jesus every uh, time we feel uh, lonely or depressed so i used to do that but still and uh, whatever i used to like whatever everybody said pray 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 i used to pray and like in those prayers like i have made uh, such uh, requests like god because i was longing for love and i have heard so many love stories like that so i used to say god i want somebody who will love me the person should be 
somebody like i i was uh, i have asked like such press that some person should come who is engineer who is uh, from my school and that would happen those people would call me they would propose me and then i say no i don't want again it will happen that uh, i will ask for god god somebody you sent so and i want somebody from uk as just like crazy prayers have done and there the people have called uh, my brother and they've told god told me that she is your sister is the one for me. and like that crazy press i go, went on doing and but uh, god was uh, listening to my prayer i i don't know what happened but every time it would whatever i prayed it, it was coming my way but i was not taking up i said god uh, i don't know why i'm not taking up whatever is coming up but uh, i really don't know what was happening and the the some the like then uh, at last i prayed god uh, i don't want uh, i really don't know what i want you just give me the person whom uh, you think that i would be a blessing for him and then i got married but still that longing that love was not fulfilled any any way like uh, so then one day what happened uh, in my house uh, a pastor came and he is totally uh, like he doesn't know uh, anything about me and he just entered my house the moment he entered my house the, that moment only he said uh, the sister who stays in this house god loves you and he he has a message for you that uh, he has changed all of your circumstances like i came from mumbai to bangalore and here i did not know anyone one single person also so god has brought you in this place that he is going to like kind of manifest himself that he is there every uh, now and then and all of my requests were fulfilled by him and i was felt so loved that mm. after that i just want to grow in his love that's my testimony yeah. thank wow. you wow praise god <laughs> very unusual prayers that you prayed and uh, wow awesome you know a prophetic word and that's that just opened uh, the way for the gospel awesome praise god so um, thank you so much uh, thank you all who shared thank you all for staying and listening and um, so yeah so look forward to this weekend be sensitive to god and we'll come back with more stories of uh, you know how god used you how god took you and so on yeah so step out radically uh, by faith and go ahead just share okay um so we'll catch up again uh, next week okay god bless see you all bye bye thank you pastor <coughs> thank you pastor thank you pastor thank you pastor thank you pastor thank you pastor